Focus on getting rich, not famous. I remember an influencer came to work with me that had just over 1 million followers. Massive influencer, was in the magazines, etc., etc., And they were making less than 2K per month. I would far rather be rich than I would famous. Hey guys, welcome to the Fitness Entrepreneur Show with me, Phil Graham. Today I wanna to talk about the subject of fame and why the quest for fame as an entrepreneur, business owner, using social media, is a very distracting quest that can essentially leave you broke and very unhappy. Now, before I go ahead and start sharing it, please make sure you click subscribe to the channel. Please make sure you share it with your like-minded friends. Every single week, I pump out lessons on life, business, money, marketing, sales, operations, delivery, everything about running a really successful business. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Phil Graham. I run Authority Network. We are the world's largest fitness business mastermind and we help our clients make more money impact and freedom. Um, I wanna share some really useful insights that I've observed over the years working with many influencers, individuals that are famous on social media and helping them grow their businesses, and looking at the pro side and the dark side of being famous. So first of all, let's get stuck in and look at the context of being famous and why it is actually quite useful and beneficial. I think it's important to realize that everyone, especially those of you that run a business, that's typically the individuals that watch this, have a desire to be famous or at least at some point in your career have struggled with the concept of being popular. And I think it's a very important concept to realize as to why we often desire this. If we have a purpose, a mission, a business, a service, we certainly want to be able to be recognized for doing a great job. We want to be known as the best in the market. And essentially, the more people that follow us, the more people that are tuning into our content, essentially means that we're having a very worthwhile effect in the lives of our market or the people that we want to be a hero to. And there's no better feeling than knowing that you're actively making a positive contribution to people's lives, giving them a great service, or insight, inspiration to go and become their best self in whatever respected area it is that you specialize in. And it's important to realize that a degree of fame is important. If you want to run a business, you do need to have an audience. If you don't have an audience, you're gonna to have to build an audience. And essentially, the more people that you've got to talk to, nurture and sell your services to, the greater the chances are that you're gonna be able to grow a more successful brand, business, purpose, mission, and get more people out there to transform themselves with your philosophies, thoughts, or insights, or whatever. Being famous also has some perks. It definitely gives you social capital, whereby you can get access to stuff for free, you can skip queues, you can get shout outs, you can get mentions, you can get respect from like-minded people. But at the same time too, there are many problems with being famous. And I know this having many friends that are considered influencers, famous celebrities. There are many downsides to being famous that I feel a lot of people are unaware of. And I wanna bring them to your attention and then share three principles with you guys on how to think accurately and avoid the destructive behaviors and thinking patterns that come with desiring to be famous and feeling unheard. And I think that's probably the biggest, most important thing that you need to realize is that when we aren't getting the recognition and we aren't getting the following that we feel that we want, we feel unheard. And as a result of that, we can't get our message across. We can't have impact and that's linked to income. It's linked to contribution. It's linked to authority, etc. The problem that I want to talk about, first of all, is the chronic dissatisfaction that comes with not being well known enough, not being unheard of. That is a problem that I feel every person running a business, utilizing social media, or every person that has a mission, expressing it on social media, at least struggles with at least once in their careers. Not enough people are listening to me. I'm not being heard enough. Am I really having an impact? Do I really believe in what I'm talking about? Is it really gonna influence people? And essentially, that can be quite destructive to your energy, to your bandwidth, to your happiness on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of how you work with clients, how you interact with your team if you have one, and of course, what you bring back into your house and your home, et cetera, and your relationships. The problem with social media nowadays is that it has really distorted our expectations of what it means to be successful. For example, if you look at social media, it's a highlight reel of people's best actions, activities, and 
we're also seeing now that some people are putting the complete opposite and sharing sob stories, sharing how their life has been terrible, etc., and also playing on that. But the reality is the highlight reel is always going to have distorted elements of reality. And those distorted elements of reality make us question ourselves. Are people paying enough attention to me? Am I rich enough? Am I successful enough? Am I making a big enough impact? What we don't realize is that people can distort their image on social media. They can appear to be successful. They can appear to be wealthy. And when you're exposed to that on a 24 hour basis, your expectations are dramatically distorted. And when you have a distorted expectation, that's whenever you lose control. And I think the biggest thing that you need to realize is that you control your expectation. And knowing the difference between what you need and what you want, and knowing that you control that expectation is absolutely paramount. The theme that many influencers and social media experts present can be overwhelming at times. And as a result of that, our quest towards it results in a 24 hour job of how can I keep up? And like I said earlier on, that distorted expectation can lead to chronic unhappiness, chronic unfulfillment, and as a result, really hinder us from producing our best work, communicating to our customers, et cetera, et cetera. So it can feel like a 24 hour job. When our expectations are not realistic and when they are warped, we tend to live in this distorted reality where we always feel like we need to keep up, we feel that we need to post stuff in order to get attention. And that is a 24 hour job that takes up a ton of energy. On top of that, being famous as well, you get a lot of free stuff. People send you stuff, people wanna have a conversation with you, whatever. You'll come to realize that free is often the most expensive because when somebody sends you something or a product or gives you free access to a service, you then have to promote it and Sometimes you can be promoting something that you don't essentially believe in. I know a ton of influencers that are promoting weight loss products, fat loss products, tons of stuff that they truly have not really tested and utilized properly. And they're just pumping it out there um, to again, get more likes, get more attention, or just to get free stuff. Same thing also applies when you're paid to do stuff, promoting things that you again, haven't really looked into, haven't really thought about properly and are pushing it at the forefront and realize that you know, with that comes repercussions. And I think when you don't believe in something and you're promoting it just for income, it actually knocks and chips away at your confidence over time. And the reality is that will lead to very inauthentic, unauthentic, sorry, uh, decisions, thinking, and essentially behavior, which in turn makes it very hard to navigate through life and be your best self. So I wanted to talk about sort of three important principles for business owners when it comes to following size, fame and essentially growing a great business and making a killing selling what you love and changing lives during the process. So the first thing I feel you need to focus on is quality, not quantity. A thousand followers looks like this. 10,000 followers looks like this. A hundred followers looks like this. So now you've seen a visual representation of what those followings look like. Let's look at the actual math and logic behind, let's say a two, thousand dollar offer. I work with fitness professionals. That's a very common price point for a 90 day program for a lot of online coaches that I work with. A lot of coaches out there that are listening to this. A hundred people times 2K is 200K. It's nearly a quarter of a million. You were able to serve a hundred people in the space of a year. And let's divide that 12 months. That's roughly the guts of 10 people a month per se. Out of 10,000 people, that's 1% of your audience. Out of a thousand, it's 10%. And what you need to realize is there are different ways to approach growing your audience. You can focus growing it with quality, i.e. knowing your market, knowing their problems, talking to their pain points, giving them insight on how they can solve their pain points, sharing social proof, et cetera, on how you have helped other people overcome the battles that your market currently face, and just really giving them deep connection, material and content as to how you progress throughout your journey. Because let's face it, most of us set up a business to talk to our younger selves. We experienced a service or a product or a particular subject per se. We invested our time and energy and money into it and we got an incredible result that impacted our lives. And we are now sort of selling to the younger us. If you look at building an audience through quality messaging, you're gonna be able to connect with them easily and you're gonna be able to influence, you're gonna be able to persuade them. When you focus on quantity 
and quantity can be built quite easily. I mean, you just do call out videos, uh, you look at humor, um, you look at stuff that makes people laugh, that's all valuable, it's attention seeking. People, people like drama, people like humor. They share stuff like that. That's why a lot of stuff goes vir viral. But you've got to realize is that those people are not necessarily connecting with you on a very deep level to the point where they trust you as your guide to bring them from where they are now to where they want to be. They just find your material valuable. It fills up a time gap of when they're maybe bored or maybe they're just browsing stuff. There is a huge difference. And realizing that when you focus on building a qualitative audience that knows that you truly understand them, you're talking to their pain points, you're giving them insights, you're giving them clarity. And of course, you can mix up humor, you can mix up call outs, whatever it is that you wanna do inside that. But you're building it from a perspective of, I want my material to be important to the people that matter. And you've got a voice and it's speaking directly into the hearts and minds of those individuals. That is when you know you've got true quality. And a qualitative audience is easy to market to, easy to sell to, and essentially will trust you enough to buy, their, buy your services and invest in you and start their journey with you. When you actually look at building quantity, it's quite hard to sift through that and find the quality and you'll find that you'll be distracted, you'll waste a lot of energy, trying to find the high quality stuff amongst that, especially if they're conditioned to just slapstick humor videos, call outs, all that kind of stuff. Second thing, focus on getting rich, not famous. I would far rather be rich than I would famous. So again, it's a concept of having a great offer, knowing your target market, communicating to them, understanding what's going on inside their head and clearly articulating and providing snippets of value on how they can solve their problems, you providing social proof and also connection material to let them know, hey, this is my story, this is why I'm doing this. Here's an example of people that I work with. Here's an example of people that have used my services. Here's a couple of insights and principles on how you can solve this problem for you. It's those little elements of knowledge over time that build trust and equity inside somebody's mind and essentially, Target market and offer are two of the most important things when it comes to running an online business. Knowing who you're talking to, talking their language, and then the offer. What is it you're gonna sell them? What is the transformation that you're gonna give them before they work with you and then after they work with you? What is the gift that you can give your audience? Knowing that language, knowing that offer is paramount to becoming rich, not famous. And when you make money from your following, you can then reinvest that money back into growing your business, making your products better, adding team members in there, services in there, or spending it on advertisement. I remember an influencer came to work with me that had just over 1 million followers, and they were making less than 2K per month with their online fitness business. Massive influencer, was in the magazines, et cetera, et cetera. Turns out the majority of the following was super low quality. All they were interested in is just clicking and tapping likes or photos, videos of a naked physique, semi-naked physique. And essentially, there was no trust really being built. They were just finding the pictures inspirational. And said client didn't really know who the target market was because it was that varied. Two, they didn't have a great offer, so they didn't essentially know what they were selling. I've also had other people that have built huge followings with humor, call outs, but again, haven't been able to monetize it. And essentially, if you're not able to monetize it, then you're not able to put bread on your table. Producing social media content takes a lot of energy and a lot of time, consistency and planning. And when you start scaling it and you start building a bigger audience, it becomes a 24 hour job where you have to think about the next thing to stay relevant. And that can be exhaustive when you're always trying to stay relevant all the time. So ensuring that you're getting paid from your audience by talking their language and having an offer in place that solves their problem is paramount. Three, focus on impact over fame. When you focus on impact first, i.e. the ability to transform somebody's life through your coaching services or whatever it is that you sell, you'll naturally tend to find that as you refine your product or your service and make it better, clients get results faster. And when they get results faster, they do the marketing for you, word of mouth spreads, Sales becomes a lot easier when your results are better and you don't have to market as hard. So again, it all boils back to that following size. If you've got a thousand followers, you know, 100 of those followers paying 2K would be 20K. It's not a lot of people, it's not hard to do. So I really just want to give you guys the absolute final solution here is that if you find yourself worrying about not being famous enough not being well known enough, not being respected enough, 
Number one, focus on quality, not quantity of following. Number two, focus on getting rich, not famous. Focus on solving problems and creating a fair exchange to get paid to them. And number three, focus on impact over fame. And I can't remember who said this, um, but it was something that really struck with me. You want everyone to know your name, not your face. And when you actually look at that, it's pretty cool because when you start making money and you get to experience what it's like to have money and you can buy things and you can have more options and you can pay for speed, I really feel that it's important to go through that experience first and have those emotions first because when you get famous, like I said, it's a 24-hour job. Your life is basically magnified. When you make mistakes, everybody frowns. You get made fun of a lot easier. Whenever you look at the whole concept of wealth and money and things like that, understand that you get paid for the value that you provide the market. And if you get paid again and again and again, it's because you've created a system that generates a result or value for people that essentially is a representation of your impact in the world. And you can certainly add value and impact by being famous and having a voice and being listened to, but at the same time too, you've got to learn how to monetize it. But never, ever, ever get caught up in the mind frame of I'm not popular enough, I'm not famous enough, et cetera, et cetera, because that will kill your bandwidth and your ability to actually expand and grow your audience through impact and serving people, changing their lives, et cetera, et cetera. So a couple of principles, hope that's been useful. Comment below what's your biggest takeaway. We'd love to hear from you. Take care. See you soon.